Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going to introduce you to experiment number seven. Number seven, we are going to be uh, using um, uh, components called uh, capacitors. And we're also going to uh, be introduced to two in instruments, uh, uh, function generators and uh, oscilloscopes. If you're sitting at an, uh, a table with this equipment, um, this uh, setup is for experiment um, number seven, part A. And um, I have already set up a single capacitor on the pegboard here. And um, there's two circuits. The circuit on the left, the battery is attached to the capacitor. When the switch goes to point uh, B, the um, battery will quickly charge the capacitor. The reason it quickly charges the capacitor is because we have a very low resistance in this branch of the circuit. Since we have a single pole, double throw switch, when the switch goes to point C, this um, uh, circuit now is closed. Current from the capacitor will discharge through a very high resistance. Um, in this case, it's 10 mega ohms. And because the resistance is very high, the current will be very low. So with a voltmeter attached across the capacitor, we'll be able to see how the voltage discharges with time. And uh, take measurements every uh, 15 to 20 seconds. Okay, so um, what we will do is uh, use a, a multimeter that we used in experiment number six, connect it as a voltmeter, turn it on, and we will connect the voltmeter in parallel across our capacitor. Um, right now, the voltage should be practically zero because uh, we haven't uh, charged this uh, capacitor just yet. When we flip the switch to point B on our uh, circuit here, point B, we have a closed loop here. This part is disconnected. And because of the very uh, low resistance in the circuit, the capacitor will discharge quickly. And right now we have a maximum voltage of uh, 2.6 volts. That's our starting voltage. When we flip the, the switch to point C, this uh, circuit is closed. This one now is disconnected. Our capacitor now is discharging. And you can see it's discharging very slowly. Right now, it's about 2 volts. We started at around 2.6 volts. Using the stopwatch provided, you will be able to, um, well, you will take um, measurements of the voltage for every 15 to 20 seconds. And once you have um, at least, um, what, six to 10 readings, you will actually plot your results on graph paper. So that's basically what um, uh, you do for this part of the experiment. Let me make um, a comment about um, uh, the capacitor. It's um, roughly the same size as these resistors, except it does not have color code bands. The actual rated value of the capacitor is written on the side. Uh, the capacitors that we are going to be using in this experiment have a, a value of 10 microfarads. And um, these capacitors are also nonpolar capacitors. These are very important because um, um, just like in this um, uh, symbol here for a capacitor, um, most capacitors are polar. They have a, a positive end and a negative end, unlike uh, resistors which don't have uh, positive and negative ends. So we can safely uh, connect them this way or the other way, and um, uh, uh, they'll, they'll still be able to work without actually uh, um, heating up and possibly blowing up and uh, startling uh, uh, your lab instructor or your fellow classmates. This is now part B of experiment number seven. Uh, for part B, we are going to use uh, two new instruments that you, um, uh, you probably haven't used before. One of these instruments is called a function generator, and the other instrument is called an oscilloscope. Um, the purpose of the function generator is to provide an AC voltage source. Uh, we won't be using a battery for this experiment, and because uh, our AC voltage source that we normally use in the wall here has a constant voltage, and uh, well, it's, it's a changing voltage, but uh, it has a constant, uh, uh, you know, uh, average voltage, and because it also has a fixed frequency of 60 hertz. Uh, using a function generator, we can select whatever voltage we want and also whatever function and frequency we want. 
Um, the reason we're using an oscilloscope is an oscilloscope, um, despite the fact that it has many knobs and levers and buttons, um, it's basically nothing more than an instrument that will allow us to measure voltage. So it's basically a, a, a voltmeter, but because uh, an oscilloscope also measures um, um, time, it allows us to see how an AC voltage changes with time. So um, this is why we're going to use an oscilloscope rather than a voltmeter in the previous experiment to measure the voltage. So I'll quickly connect the, uh, uh, the um, function generator to our RC circuit and through this plexiglass you'll see a capacitor and a resistor. We take one of our coaxial cables, we attach it to the output of our function generator. Beside it, we make sure that the amplitude knob is turned up. If it's not turned up and it's um, uh, zero, the signal coming out will have an amplitude of zero. So uh, make sure the amplitude knob is turned up. And um, we connect it in parallel because all voltmeters, including signal generators, are connected in parallel across some um, uh, components. So we are going to connect it in parallel across the capacitor and the resistor, like this. And when we turn it on, we have to tell the signal generator what frequency we want and uh, what function we want. If we press uh, this button here, one kilohertz, and uh, adjust the fine adjustment now for frequency here until uh, we get about um, one. So one times a thousand, we have um, one kilohertz on the display here. So, so this function generator is producing a one kilohertz uh, 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 signal. And right now, um, the function that uh, we need to produce would be a sinusoidal wave. Unless you're told otherwise, you always uh, pick a sinusoidal wave. So right now, this function generator is producing um, a 1,000 hertz um, um, uh, voltage source that is it's changing with time. And because our amplitude knob is um, uh, turned up, uh, the voltage will be non-zero. So now we are going to connect our voltmeter, which is an oscilloscope, across the same two points. And because uh, oscilloscopes are uh, voltmeters, and voltmeters are connected to circuits in parallel, we will connect it in parallel across our RC circuit like this. When we turn on our oscilloscope, we wait out a few seconds until we get a display on the screen. And we notice that there's a sinusoidal um, signal on the screen. Along the vertical axis, we measure voltage. And across the horizontal axis, we measure time. We have two important uh, magnification knobs on the oscilloscopes. This knob here that allows you to change the magnification of the voltage, and we have another knob here that allows you to change the magnification along the time axis. So, if we have, if, if we have, um, okay, if we have a, a signal like this, um, before um, you begin the experiment, you have to determine what um, the amplitude of the signal is in volts and what uh, the frequency is of um, this um, uh, signal uh, in hertz. So let's do that together really quick. We can move um, um, uh, the, the signal up and down by adjusting these little knobs. And um, if we position the bottom of the signal on an arbitrary horizontal line, okay, um, we see that um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six divisions from peak to peak. Now, our magnification knob is set to 2 volts per division. So if the magnification is 2 volts per division, and on the screen, the peak-to-peak -peak voltage is uh, uh, 6 divisions, 6 divisions times 2 volts per division, divisions will cancel out, and our peak-to-peak -peak voltage will be 12 volts. Now, what is our amplitude? Amplitude, by definition, is half the peak-to-peak -peak voltage. So our voltage or our amplitude uh, will actually be 
uh, 6 volts. Now, the next thing we want to do is determine what the frequency of this um, uh, signal is. So again, we can move it around. And if we position, there's a loose wire here, but when we position uh, the peaks on this horizontal graduated line, we see that from one peak to the other peak, there's one, two, three, four, five divisions. Our magnification knob is set to 0.2 milliseconds per division. 0.2 milliseconds per division. So 0.2 milliseconds per division times five divisions, we have point, uh, uh, sorry, um, is it point 0.1? No, no, uh, it's actually uh, one um, millisecond, one millisecond, because the divisions cancel out, and um, our period is uh, one millisecond. Now, since oscilloscopes do not measure uh, frequency directly, we have to actually determine now what the frequency is from the period. And since um, the frequency is the inverse of the period, uh, 1 over 1 millisecond, or 1 over 0 0.001 seconds, uh, the frequency then will be 1,000 hertz, or 1 kilohertz. And as you can see from the signal generator here, that's um, the frequency that is being applied. So, um, in summary, um, our AC voltage source is a signal generator, and um, our voltmeter that will allow us to actually measure um, uh, and determine um, the uh, voltage and also the uh, frequency uh, of uh, the voltage uh, source that we have is uh, going to be um, um, determined by using uh, an oscilloscope. So that's it for today.